Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. You know, Debian 13, codenamed Trixie, was released recently, and it's an awesome distribution. It's stable, it's solid, it performs very well, and also there's a number of different desktop environments that you could use with Debian, but what do you do if you want to change your desktop environment or just add additional ones? In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you exactly how to do this. Now I'm also going to touch on some different options that are available for those of you that haven't installed Debian yet. So you'll see that in this video as well. And then we're going to see the process of adding or changing desktop environments to an existing install. So if you're ready to go, well, I'm ready to go. So let's get started right now. To start, let's take a look at how to choose a desktop environment for Debian during the installation process. Later, I'll show you how to add or remove desktops on an existing system, but if you're installing Debian for the very first time, you could pick your desktop right in the installer. And there's two main ways of doing this. The first method is to use a live image to install Debian. The thing is, Debian provides several live installation images, each with a different desktop environment preloaded. For example, you'll find images for GNOME, Plasma, and others. All you have to do is download the one that features the desktop that you prefer, and once you install it, you'll have that desktop. The second method is to use the network installer. Now the network installer is a bit more advanced, but it gives you more flexibility. During the installation process with the net install image, you'll reach a screen where you could choose which desktop environments you want to install. All you have to do is use your arrow keys to highlight a choice and press the space bar to select one or more desktops. Once you do that, your installation will include those desktop environments right from the login screen. And that covers new installations, but I'm sure many of you are curious how you add or remove desktop environments to an existing installation. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to show you in the next section. So let's get started. And what I'm going to do is open up a terminal. And then I'm going to give you some commands to run. The first thing we're going to do is update our package repository index. We just want to make sure that the index is up to date. So what we'll do is run sudo and then apt update, just like this. Now on my end, I only need sudo because I'm logged in as a non-root user. But obviously, if you're using the root account, then you're not going to need sudo. But anyway, I'll press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. And there we go. Now it's telling me all packages are up to date. But on your end, if you see that updates are available, I do recommend that you install all available updates. We want to make sure that we start with everything up to date, which makes everything a lot easier. And to do that, we could type sudo, then apt, then dist hyphen upgrade, just like this. Now on my end, nothing is going to happen when I run this command. I already have all available updates installed. But again, on your end, I do recommend that you install all available updates. Anyway, with updating out of the way, it's time to get started and install some desktop environments. And to do that, we'll type sudo, and then the task cell command. And believe it or not, this is the only command that we'll need to carry out this entire process. Once you've entered that command, you'll see a screen that should look something like this. And if you're under the impression that it looks the same as a screen that comes up while using the network installer, you're right, it's the exact same thing. The task cell command brings up this same menu and that gives us the ability to manage our desktop environments anytime. And here we're seeing that GNOME is the desktop environment that I have selected. What I did was use a live image to install Debian. I used the GNOME version, so that's why I have GNOME automatically selected. But anyway, from this menu right here, we could choose the desktop environments that we want to have installed. I'm going to leave GNOME installed on my end, but what I'm going to do is add a few more. So for example, I'm going to add XFCE, I'm also going to add KDE Plasma. I'll also add the Cinnamon desktop. And why not install Mate as well? You can install multiple desktop environments. You could also deselect a choice if you want to remove a desktop. You could press the space bar to toggle whether something is or is not intended to be installed. But anyway, all you do right here is select the desktop environments that you want, and then you press Tab, which will bring the selection to the OK button, and then you simply press Enter. And at this point, it's going to install all the desktop environments that I've chosen. Now during the process, as you can see right here, Debian is going to pull in a large number of packages. 
And this is normal since desktop environments come with many dependencies. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. And during the process, you may be asked to choose a display manager, and that's what you're seeing right here. If you haven't heard of the term display manager before, what that is is a program that provides your graphical login screen. But which one should you choose? Well, what I'm going to do is give you some guidelines that'll help you make a decision. The first thing to consider is whether or not GNOME is going to be your primary desktop environment. If it is, then you should definitely choose this first option right here, GDM3. GDM, or the GNOME Display Manager, is very tightly integrated with GNOME, and some of GNOME's features actually depend on it. So that's why if GNOME is going to be your primary desktop, you should choose GDM3. Now on the other hand, if you choose to use KDE Plasma as your primary desktop, what you'll want to do is choose this option right here, SDDM. SDDM is going to be the default display manager for the Plasma desktop, so if Plasma is more your thing, then definitely choose SDDM. On the other hand, LightDM is going to be a lightweight display manager that's more general purpose, so you could choose that one if you want, but on my end, what I'm going to do is choose GDM3 because GNOME is going to be the primary desktop for my installation. But anyway, once you've made your selection, press Tab, which will take you down to the OK button, and then you simply press Enter. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting for all of the packages to be installed, which can take some time due to the number of packages that's going to be installed as part of this process. But anyway, what I'll do is just speed this up in post, and I'll be right back as soon as it's finished. And at this point, the process is complete. Now you might be wondering how you go about switching between your desktop environments. Well, that's actually pretty easy. What we'll do is log out. And here we have the login screen. And this particular login screen is GDM, one of the ones that I mentioned earlier, the primary display manager for the GNOME desktop. Now you might be using a different login manager, but the steps are actually the same regardless. So what we'll do is click on our username. Now before I type in my password, what I'll do is go down to the bottom right. I'm going to click this icon right here. And this gives me a menu I could use to select the desktop environment that I want. Now on my end, all I had to do was log out and then click on this button to see the list. But if for some reason on your end, you don't see a desktop environment that you've installed, you might have to reboot your system. Most of the time, logging out is fine, but sometimes you do have to reboot. So if you don't see something on the list that you think you should see, then reboot your system and then try again and it should appear. But what I'll do is randomly choose Plasma. And then I'll just proceed to log in as normal. And here we go. And here it is. I've logged into the Plasma desktop, as you can see, and I can begin using it. As you can see, adding desktop environments to Debian is pretty easy. We only needed one command to do it, and then we had a list of desktop environments we could choose. We could choose one or more, or even all of them if you want to. And then once we've made our selections, we could choose our desktop at the login screen. And there you go. In today's video, we saw the process of adding or changing desktop environments within Debian, and I hope it helped you out. If it did, then be sure to click the like button to let YouTube know. I would really appreciate that. Also, in the comments down below, let me know what you guys are running nowadays. What's your favorite desktop environment? I'm really curious to find out. In the meantime, subscribe to Learn Linux TV if you haven't already done so. There's all kinds of Linux-related shenanigans happening on this channel, and I can't wait for you guys to see my latest content. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.